Hey folks, Michael the Hammer Mulligan here. Here with my boy Jaxie. Well, uh, today's guest is going to be Michael Loco Lobo Grass. We got a lot to talk about. We got a great, great, great week of MMA, month of MMA coming up. Lots of fights coming up. Memorial Hall. I want you to stop following me at Hammer Fireside on Twitter. So, Twitter at the Hammer Fireside. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll throw out some events, some new shows coming up. Who's coming on next, that type of thing. So, never done it before. This is my first Twitter account. So, I'm officially tweeting or twerking or whatever that is. Yeah. <laughs> hey, folks. Well, where are we? And Fireside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey folks, Michael the Hammer Mulligan here. Welcome to another Fireside with Michael Loco Lobo Grish. What's up, Michael? Like hammer. Long time no see. Yeah, it's been a while that I shot these alligator chairs, bro. <laughs> hey, say hello to the born people. you born people out here. We're in born now. What's up, born people? My people? That's it. <laughs> Welcome to the Fireside with the Hammer. That's it. So, so Loco Lobo's been with me for a while here, and uh, we do a lot of shows. I like getting him on here because he knows a lot more about the, what's going on out there than I do. So, first of all, we're going to talk, we're going to do like a rapid fire here. Yeah. We're going to talk about Cage Titans first. Michael? Oh, nice show. What's the date? January 24th, Give Cage some Titans. Yep. Plymouth, Massachusetts, are your favorite venue, my favorite That's right, venue. Memorial Hall. It's good for everything but a masquerade ball. Yeah. <laughs> Flop. <laughs> so that, uh, yeah, the, the <laughs> venue itself is probably the, the best venue in New England. Yes, it is. And if not, it's in, you know, some people might argue here and there, but people come from out of state, they they, they love that place. Dude, it's a coliseum. It's a coliseum. It is. It's just a perfect a show for watching anything. And, and Mike Povier. Puts on a great show. He's a good he's, guy. He's got, wears many hats. Mike's a good friend of mine, training partner. Was that a ball joke? No, no, right, no, no. no. Mike's got a little hair left. He's doing good. Yeah. Uh, he's better than me. <laughs> no comment. Yeah, but uh, the show's stacked. Stacked with great fights. I think there's one, two, I want to say three title fights on there. Nice. Um, the main event is Johnny Cupcakes Campbell, yep. my favorite fighter in the oh, Northeast. Dude, awesome. Awesome, awesome. I hate to tell you that he, some of the guys it's just Joe Sullivan. It, it's, yeah. it's like Joe Sullivan. Man. He's, he's, I love he's on a hair. tear, man. He's on a tear. You know, Cupcakes is uh, on a tear. I think he's uh, breakout fighter of the year. I know he's nominated. I, ho I hope he gets it. Um, he, he deserves it. I voted for him. The kid is exciting to watch. He's gotten, he's, he's, he's gotten so much better in the last two years. I've, I've spotted him a couple of years back, and I look at him now, and I'm like, wow, this kid's really good. And he's fighting uh, Billy Giovanella, the Wolverine from oh, uh, Connors yeah, MMA. Yeah, he's a great fighter. Yep, he's a good fighter. And uh, John Connors is a uh, friend of mine. He puts out some Wasn't he in a fights. movie or something? No, that's the, that's the Terminator. The Terminator. But, <laughs> but John, Con John Connors, Mad Dog, uh, uh, Jiu-Jitsu team, Billy fights out of there. And um, that's sure to be a heck of a brawl there. Beautiful. Now tell me about Chip. I'm excited. Chip's back Well, in yeah, town. Chip's, Chip's. Chip uh, had a fight fall through for CES. And um, Mike offered him Ralph Johnson, who's a very dangerous oh and a very good friend of mine. He's so, a great guy. Ralph is a great yeah, guy. Yeah, Ralph, Ralph is a fun guy to watch fight. I love him. He comes. He's, he's not. There won't be no takedowns in this fight, kid. He's colorful. He's, He's very colorful. colorful. He's a good friend of mine. I love him. Uh, Chip's my student. Uh, he's a CCFA boy, CR Tong boy. Uh, of course, my my hats with Chip to win the fight, oh, but I no. mean, I don't, you know. Yeah, I yeah, just, no, yeah. I think I'm, it's going to be an awesome fight, you know. Yeah, yeah, I think, I'll think i tell you how I think it's going to go, and only because this show will air probably a couple days before, yeah. and then it, Jim Ralph never changes this anyway. I think Ralph's going to go out. He's going to keep his weight on his front foot. He ain't going to check a kick. And Miraz Apollon is just going to eliminate his legs. He's going to take his legs out, and his jab is going to be in yeah. his face every second. Well, that's the game plan. We know Ralph's heavy-handed. Um, you know, that's the game plan. He's been training with the guys from White Crew. I don't know if that's going to make a difference because you can't do too much in three, four weeks. But uh, Sean Graham... It's been, uh, I've seen Ralph really grow with, uh, with Sean Graham. Yeah. From, I think it's FAF Gym. Yeah. And, um, 
He's Randolph. grown mental. Not only not only has he grown in the, in the in the sport, but he's also grown. I don't want to say mentally, but he's grown as a person. He's, no, he's just mental. This, he's mental Ralph's man. Mental. He's a mental man. We it's, love him. Yeah, we got a, a lot of in the sport. So we got yeah. So <laughs> Chip is probably arguably one in top two strikers in the Northeast. I would oh, say definitely. Yeah. his patience is the key with him. He's just so patient. He yeah. He, um, he was robbed at CES. Yeah. The judges robbed him. Yeah. He beat Beekman. Beekman knows it too. Yeah. So Chip's still number one in my and I my eyes in the one eighty five division. So Ralph, is. if you this is a win win for Ralph. Chip you know what I mean? Ralph. Ralph. Either way, either way, it's gonna look good yeah. for Ralph. It's gonna be but, a great fight though. But what's the old rule, you know, not to take away from Chip, because obviously I would do that, but what what's the old rule? Never leave it. Ne never underestimate the judges. Anybody. Yeah, never, never leave it to the, the judges. judges. Yeah, I get it. So if you say you got robbed, sure. that means you didn't finish. Sure. Which I'm not taking it away because that was a hard fight, but he did he did win the fight. Well, that was a that was a great fight uh, to see yesterday because that was on Access TV and Pat Miller awesome. touched there with Mike Ch Chevalo, the yeah. voice there, and they both gave Chip two rounds to one over Beatman. So. If uh, the judges, Militech, so you, if you want to, yeah, I'm just saying, a, if yeah. the judges think they got more experience than Pat Militech, then okay, yeah, whatever. They but, do it boxing, probably. Yeah, they boxing. It's out of my name. Yeah, that was my point. That's it. Yeah. So we also have um, Jimmy Manning fighting a kid named. He's actually a kid. I don't really know. Uh, Billy Conn? Billy Connors. Billy, Billy Connors. Billy Connors. From in, Boston Muay Thai. Right. And I think he also trains with South Shore a little bit, don't he? Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure. He, I think Ryan White is a trainer of South Shore, but I think he goes to Boston Muay Thai. All right. That's the, that's the connection. So we, we think okay. the kid's going to come out to, to bang. and um, You know, he's 3-0. and oh. I don't think he's fought anybody uh, so-called. He's going to fight someone when he fights Jimmy Manning, though, because Jimmy's going to get right in his face. And uh, should be an interesting fight because the kid, this kid Billy's supposed to be a pretty rough kid. So, well, let me um, tell you, I, I don't know Billy that well, but I know his father. I met his father. His Billy's last three fights, I sat with his father. Oh, really? And this is probably the proudest man on the planet. He told me, you know, his kid used to be out hanging and banging and doing stupid shit. Oh, okay. And he got into the sport and he really turned around to the sport. Oh, that's awesome. And, and, I didn't and know we that. talked about, oh yeah, you know, he used to smoke, he used to drink, blah blah. blah. But but he totally turned himself around to the sport of AA. His father was a great proud man. The son is very respectful. I met him. He's a nice kid, oh, very okay. respectful nice. kid. That's great uh, to know. But but he's a young kid, and Jimmy's a seasoned a seasoned person now. Now I know he's a really good stand up kid. But I think Jimmy's got him on the ground all day long. I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy just got promoted to brown belt. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Manning is uh, one of my top students, and um, his his jujitsu game is phenomenal. Uh, but he's he's got really good boxing too. His boxing solid, and we're just working his MMA uh, Muay Thai. Yeah. But all around, if he. If he clinches with this kid, I, I think it's trouble. Yeah, I think I think he needs to take this kid to the ground. Yo, that's he, my opinion. That's a plan. Yeah, that's yeah, a plan. Yeah. But you know, it should be a good matchup. Oh, it's gonna be great either way because look at it's the it's the epic battle of of ground versus stand up yep. to me. Yep. I mean, I seen Jimmy's stand up game. It's okay, but it isn't as good as his ground game. Oh, absolutely. You know, not he's, even he's yeah. a whiz on the ground. He's a whiz. Right. Now, we're gonna keep him where he's strong, like Juliano would have been. Exactly. Now, yeah. two more fights. You got a couple <laughs> more fights on there. You got uh, you Max. Got, you got Mad Max fighting like Manny Bermudez. Who's the I love champion. Manny too. Manny's, Manny's a great a, fighter. Oh, That's gonna man. be a fight for the for the. Well, you know what? Nobody wants to fight Manny Bermudez. Nobody at one thirty five wanted to fight him in the amateur division. I don't uh, blame him. <laughs> he's a rough, tough kid. He's an excellent jiu-jitsu guy. He's got good stand-up. Good-looking kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's fun to watch. He's Even excited. his name is good. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the kid fought him at, uh, that was 125. I thought it was going to be a mismatch, but the kid brought it to him. And, you know, I don't know if Manny took him light or, or, or whatever it was, but the kid put in a good fight, but Manny submitted him at the end. Um, but... I'll tell you what, he's got a fight in his hands. Yeah, Max does. Barrett's a, is a, is a He's gamer. a wily critter. He's a gamer, yeah, man. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're, we're training him to fight Manny. And it's um, it's kind of like, who's who's going to have the... Uh, it's Manny the and Manny, baby. Manny and Max. <laughs> they, and they're friends. They know yeah, each other. So it's a respectful match, yeah. you know. There's no, like um, those better. Yeah, there's no bad blood there. You know what I mean? They're, I think they're even neighbors in Abington. Yeah. Like four houses down. So... We got Manny and Max for the uh, 135 title. Yeah. 
And then we have a kid named uh, from CCF, Sean Lally's fighting. Yeah. Who's a uh, former Army Ranger, real tough nice. kid. Nice. Fighting a former kid from CES. I'm not sure on the kid's name. Um, some guy. His name some is some guy, guy. Some guy. But, um, and, um, you know, the card's subject, subject to change at any time. I'm sure that uh, the. I, I, I'm missing some of the fights at the cage tank, but I know those are just like oh, some yeah, of the main no, ones. We, we haven't got time to cover all that anyway. Yeah. We've got so many other things. I think yeah. hopefully Mr. Polver will be in here sometime soon to chat. Right. <laughs> so that'll be good. He's a busy guy. We yeah. had a couple appointments set up, and, and one of us always got something going yeah. on. So. Yeah. Be a good show, though. January 24th, Cage Titans Memorial Hall. There you go. All right. Now, I want to talk about Giuliano Banana Cotino. Yeah. Giuliano had a fight that was supposed to go down this weekend. Everybody heard about it through the show, to everywhere. Hundreds and hundreds of people left the Cape Cod, and, you know, it actually rose six inches when they all went to, <laughs> went to Mohegan Sun yeah. to watch Banana fight. But, unfortunately, there were some issues. What happened, Mike? Well, I mean, Banana came to fight. He was prepared. He was ready. And um, uh, I think Tim's banana weighed in at 271 and 270, and Tim came in at 370. 371. The, the, so banana was 270, he was 371. Yeah, 371. Um, to me, he seemed like more close to the 400 pounds, so he didn't look like in the best shape. But I guess what the problem was is um, something came up on the MRI. On his brain, Tim's so, brain. So Tim Sylvia is a former UFC champion. Two he times. Heavyweight, two time heavyweight champion in the UFC. Right. So for Banana, this would have been a phenomenal fight. Um, you know, it would have been a feather in his cap if he could have took this one. It might have upped him to the next level. But he trained three months for that fight. He did. He trained hard too. He really did. And um, awesome. and you know what? What happened? It was a, it was just out of his hands, out of our hands, and the commission. I guess they found some spots on his brain, which is indicative to um, brain uh, uh, blood clots. Yep. It's probably had old, they're probably old or what have right, you. Right, right. But they're not going to let a guy that's forty years old or thirty-eight years old fight and let that be on them in case he hit his head on the mat or banana hit him with an old man right, which we were playing. And it was a weird thing too because it was like he already had one before, and then because of his age and his shape and yeah. everything else, they made him go and get another one last minute. And that's the key, Mike. You, you, when they looked at him in, in the shape he came in, which was doesn't look like much of a shape, yeah. round as a shape. And you know, I'm going to be respectful to the former champion. And I, you know, you know, he was a former champion, but I think he had his day. I think Banana would have took that fight. We were ready for it. Yeah. Trained three months, but you got to look at a man's health too. It's not worth oh, it. Oh, yeah. So yeah, you got to look at his health. You're right. T you know, a, a fighter's health is the most important, and. Um, you know, they brought them both in the cage. You know, 300 people, Banana sold 300 tickets. Uh, obviously, people came, bought hotel rooms. It's nothing that we could control. It Once happens. Got it, there, happened. It, it happened oh. to me. My guy left. It's happened to Michael. It's ha It happens all the time. It's an unfortunate thing, but they can't give you, you know, they can't go giving everybody their money no. back. They get 20 fights, yeah. and that's what they depend on that to keep the show going. And if you don't time. understand the fight game, and you're bitching and moaning online, then don't go to the fights. It's right. simple, because on the fight card, they'll always say, all the, the, the card is subject to change at last minute. Anything could happen to the fighters. He could dehydrate, he could faint, um, something comes up in the medical, an emergency, who knows. If you bitched and moaned because you bought a ticket and you're crying about the fight, don't come to the next fights. Right. That's so and, and listen, you can prepare all day long and something could happen last minute. I right. remember I worked my heart out for so long for a fight, and I went in there and they used to give the blood pressure test the night of the fight right before you got in the ring, and I failed the blood pressure. Everybody's blood pressure's up. It's stupid. Of course it is. I mean, I, I, I run high anyways. Yeah. I'm very healthy, but I still run high, and that just, it blew the fight. They wouldn't let me fight. So, so That's I'm not, not saying that Tim was in great shape in training, no, because no, when he not. was ready to fight Moorcraft, when they were looking at him for Moorcraft, he weighed in, or he was at 350 pounds. See, that's that a better weight for him. Right, and that was three months before that. Yeah. So so if he went from 350 to 371, three months difference, yeah. that he ain't training. Yeah. But what yeah. I didn't like, it, it, it thing when they brought the both fighters in, people were booing him. Now, it's a medical issue. It isn't yeah, like yeah, he yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. You don't know. You don't have enough information. You to don't know. Him. He's a former champ. That's one thing about MMA fans that drives me crazy being a traditional martial artist, is that some of them lack... Um, the respect that the right. traditional martial arts have, enough of that. 
Well, okay. well, 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 let me let me go just say this. Yeah. Some of them lack the understanding of the sport because yeah. you could have two guys standing up and banging that don't know what they're doing, but it looks cool. And then you could have two guys on the ground for for four minutes that that are just artful. They're right. going through these motions just like match. it's a ch- and it's beautiful to somebody who understands and practices it. But to a fan, it's just a blob on the mat. I get that. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. But you, know. you don't boo the former no, two-time no, no. world champion because that now he's got to worry about what's going on in his head. Right. The new the new test of the MRI CAT scan came up that he has some kind something wrong with his brain. Yeah. So they're out there booing him. I thought it was total disrespectful. I was ashamed of to be there at that moment and hear those people booing. And I went up to Tim Sylvia personally afterwards. He seen me sitting with Banana. I've met him before at City of Tom and, and told him what a legend he is and I think a lot of you and I'm sorry to hear about your uh, medical condition. So it is yeah, what it nice, is, you know what nice. I mean? And Banana came ready to fight. Something happened to Tim and that's, that's what happened. But thankfully, in the sport, it, there is a lot of talk about this. There's this show. There's a million other yeah. venues that are going to be talking about this. So hopefully, all this this talk about the non-fight will uh, will get Banana noticed a little bit more and help it will push him further in yeah. his career. Because he is a great fighter. He deserves to be at a little he's, higher level he's now. He's had some offers from CES and Bellator. There's already on the table good. right now. So good. it's good for Banana right good. now. Yeah, he's going. Out. He's amazing. Yeah, and his school's doing well up in Hyannis Gracie Fitness. A little plug for that school. Speaking of Gracie Fitness, did I hear a rumor that Daniel Gracie is opening another Gracie Fitness in Hanover? Yep, Hanover, Mass. Yep. Where's that going to be, Dino? That's going to be on... Um, I want to say Route 53, right across from the Hanover Mall. It's an wow, huh? unbelievable location. It's, it's a ton a, of traffic. Matter of fact, I just got off the phone with Daniel, and I was going to, uh, it's going to be open very soon. Wow. Within a month, I would say. And um, I, I wanted to make sure it was good to plug plug the place. So it's a Henzo Gracie affiliate, Team yep. Daniel Gracie. It's going to be called Gracie Fitness. It's going to specialize in uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Yep. It's going to have the juice bar there. It's going to have a yoga facility in there. Yep. It's, um, I don't even know the square matter. It's 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 a phenomenal building. I was in there a week ago watching it being built right now. Me and Banana oh, yeah, and Daniel yeah. in there. So you're going to have a two-time world champion, uh, numerous pride veteran, fought over in Japan. Daniel's fought all over the world. He's a man who knows. has been Mixed racing martial the arts. Excuse me? Mixed martial arts. Mixed martial arts fought. And... and Competed in Brazilian right. Jiu Jitsu, yep. world champion, and has fought from numerous organizations from Bellator to Pride and organizations in Israel. and He's been all over the world to fight. Um, and there's already some great schools in that area, too, so that's going to be a hot spot for MMA. Yeah. I mean, you know, closer yeah. there, I think there's uh, yeah. South Shores in the, what is it, Assinippi Park over there? Yeah, South Shores up there. You've got uh, uh, Andre Dedeco. Yeah. Dedeco, he's uh, Almeida. I think I think that's his lesson, but Tadeco is an excellent instructor also. Yeah. And so sure up there. Now who's and gonna be there's gonna be uh so he's gonna be let me let me get down to the to the meat of the place. Mm-hmm. Kinda give me the is it gonna be kinda like Giuliano school? Yes. Is it gonna be so you're gonna have strictly Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Okay, all jits. You're gonna have Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and you're gonna have some cardio classes built up on Muay Thai. Okay. I'll be instructing up there too. Um some Muay Thai classes. Are they going to have the MMA, cla- MMA class as well? Are they gonna no, do- he's no. not going to deal with MMA up there. Okay. We're keep the MMA and CCFA. We're going to continue that program down here. Yep, good. And, and then City Autonomy the Affiliate. So that school in, in um, Hanover is right in between uh, City Autonomy and CCFA. Beautiful. So it's going to work out good. He's got between City Autonomy and, and uh, Daniel Gracie, there's, I want to say, four fighters in the UFC right now. Right. But uh, Daniel just had a, one of his students, Paul Felder, knock oh out. Oh my God! The Irish, the Irish dragon, the yep. most beautiful Sp- knockout, spinning oh. back fist, spinning oh, radio spin- strike. Oh, nice, nice, right there with the with the forearm with the the meat there, yep. right there. Knock oh. that kid out cold. His toes were curled. I liked it. He had another video on the next day that says, "If you think it was an accident that this kid got into the yeah, UFC, sh- look at the end and showed his yeah, last show fight the spinning, that got spinning him into the spinning hook." So, wow! These fighters that are with Daniel, he's got a, Daniel's got a few schools around the world uh, in Brazil, one in Connecticut, and one in Philadelphia. He's producing unbelievable fighters. Um, some of them fighters are going to be following him down here, yeah. and they're going to be training, course, uh, cross training, cross training with Sia Tong, CCFA. Yep. Yeah. And um, but that school in Hanover is just gonna really gonna be the concentration on 
Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu taught by the master himself. Nice. So it's going to be a phenomenal, uh, unbelievable academy. Beautiful. So Beautiful. I'm really excited for him. Wow, that's huge. That. That's huge. That's huge for anybody that loves Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to train with Daniel because it's an honor to train with him and it's... Uh, he can, he's just, he's a master. He's been training since he's been seven years old. Too. If you've seen some of his old fights, I mean, Google him, look him up, yeah, go on YouTube, too. try to find some old Daniel Gracie fights. He comes to the fight. amazing man. Yeah. yeah. And he's been in the geese since, I think Daniel's 40 years old. Is he that old? Yeah, I think he he's, good yeah, he's, he's, he's <laughs> uh, but um, he's been in the gi probably for 33, 35 years, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, he knows this stuff, so. Yeah, he needs it's, to get a new gi. No, he's got about eight of them. But he, he, I'm going to tell you something. He's gonna, he wants to be on the fire side. Maybe you get him in next week, Michael. Beautiful. Beautiful. Right, so. yeah, I'm dying to. Yeah, we talked about it before we left. I think he was on his way to Philadelphia, and then he was going to I can't remember. He was going to another fight. England. England. He went to yep. England, and he yep. said as soon as he got back, he was looking forward to coming yep. on. We're going to get him on here next week. I just got off the phone with him and uh, give him the plug for the school. So... We're very excited about that. You know, nice. A lot of nice. Tell me a little bit. You know, one of the I haven't seen Sarah out there in a little bit. I know she had a disturbing, uh, kind of a bummed out loss. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, to to me and to Sarah and anyone affiliated with her, it wasn't really a loss. Exactly. And because That's, number yeah. one, it was an amateur fight. Yep. Yeah. Um, and she's still learning. It was her fourth amateur fight, and uh, we went to Pittsburgh. To, to, to the fight. So it was an amateur fight. Now, this is how hard it is to get this girl to fight. Yeah, she's, I mean, you know, to be honest with you, she's a dangerous striker and her yeah. jiu-jitsu game is getting better every every day. She yeah. trains hard. And she's a good athlete, natural athlete. Yeah. So and she's a, she's in the service. And she's in the service, yeah. 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 She's, she's a hard worker. She's been in Afghanistan. She's she's tough. She's, 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 she's yeah. been training with me and Pat since she's been 14 years old. She's, yeah. she's on it. So... We went to Pittsburgh. We knew there were shin pads. We yeah. knew there were two-minute rounds. Yeah. You can't do much in two minutes, Hammer. Right. <laughs> okay? We knew there was two-minute rounds, shin guards, and no striking on the ground. So it takes a lot of weapons away. Yeah. Now, when we got there at the, at the um, rules meeting, the rules meeting, yeah. the referee says there's no head kicks in the amateurs. Now we're like, what? Are and, you and, serious? And, and keep it in mind that they've been training... For oh, this yeah. fight, and, and what happens as a fighter is you get muscle memory. Muscle you go memory. one, two, three, knee, and one, two, three, kick, whatever. That's you're exactly doing. what <laughs> happened. So, of course, we get to the fight, and I'm going to give it to the girl that, that she fought. She, I think she took the first round. I think the second round, Sarah took it. The girl wanted to hold her and take her to the ground, and um, Sarah wanted to, wanted it to be a fight, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, she got her in an arm bar one time, Sarah escaped. We worked all that with her. And then the third round, she was coming alive, and she was starting to whoop this chick. And then all of a sudden, I seen the setup, and I went, no, don't do it. No, <laughs> don't do it. And there it comes. She whacked her, but the kick really didn't hit her hard. Right. It was the it right hand off. afterwards right. that knocked this chick into oblivion, and I was like, oh, no. Yeah. And I knew what was going to happen. Now, Tyson Chadia uh, helped me corner, and I said, this girl ain't gonna Tyson, come by the way, is a great uh, uh, manager, MMA manager, right? Yeah. Has yeah. his own school, to, uh, top game up in New Hampshire, too. Right. He's a uh, uh, Sea Tong student. He's a brown belt on the uh, banana and uh, Daniel Gracie. Um, but I said, This girl ain't coming out. Yeah, no. And she didn't come out. The, 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 she had 40 seconds left, and the girl wouldn't come out the fight. And the crowd, her own crowd, was booing her. They wanted yeah. to see the end. Yeah, yeah. Sarah won that fight. So that well, was the choice. She lost. The girl, the girl basically made a choice. She said, listen, if I go out there, she's going to hit me some more. If I don't, I'm going to sit here and win. Yeah, you know, you know, like, it goes to the thing, and I, I maybe some people might won't like what I say about this, but some people, it's like the Facebook crowd. Some people want to be a fighter. They think they're a fighter until they actually get in the cage yeah, yeah. and they get punched and kicked <laughs> in the face or choked unconscious. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, there's no more, nobody comes around anymore. And then sometimes it happens in the middle of the, the ring, the cage, and you go, I don't want to do it. And I think what the girl realizes is, I should be home baking cookies. Right. Sarah's just an animal. <laughs> uh, we're going to look for some fights for her up and around, maybe Good. in February and March, Good. and get her jiu-jitsu game a little more solid. And she's going to be a force at 115. Nice. So, nice. Well, Michael, I think we covered a lot today. Yeah. This has been great. Thank you for coming to another Fireside Chat. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Oh, Folks, yeah. thanks for coming to another Fireside Chat with Michael the Hammer Mulligan and Michael Loco Lobo Gresh. <laughs>